Hello, I am Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture in refraction. Today we are studying presbyopia. So what is meant by presbyopia? Presbyopia is age related diminution or decrease in the near vision that is also called the reading vision due to decrease in the facility of accommodation. Now there are a lot of near vision tasks that we do in our day to day life. This can be reading a newspaper and uh, reading a book, reading labels on the jars, threading a needle etc and so on and so forth. So when uh, in old age it becomes difficult to perform this near vision task especially because of decreased accommodative power of the eye this process on this refractive error is called presbyopia. The amplitude of accommodation which is represented by the symbol double A is equal to 1 divided by near point of accommodation. In my previous video, I already explained to you what is meant by the near point. The point which is nearest to the eye at which the object can be accurately focused on the retina with full accommodation is called the near point or the punctum proxima. So what is the incidence of uh, presbyopia? About 100% of the population which is older than 50 years with an average age of onset of 45 years. So almost the entire population develops presbyopia and it usually starts at the age of 40 to 45 years of age. Now for those who are not aware about accommodation and want to clear their concepts about accommodation right from the basics, I would advise you to watch my video on accommodation power of the eye which is present uh, uh, in the, on the channel and you can click the eye button which will be coming over here and reach the video. So as I told you the incidence is almost 100%. And what causes this presbyopia? What is the pathophysiology behind the presbyopia? The main reason is this amplitude of accommodation. This amplitude of accommodation will gradually diminish or decrease throughout the life along with age. So it is present at maximum amount during childhood. So you can see at 10 years of age, it is about 12 diopters. And as the age progresses in the fifth decade and sixth decades, it can decrease to about two diopters and one remaining. Uh, and it can remain to about only one diopters and finally become zero diopters also. So we have a Donders curve which gives us about which tells us about the amplitude of accommodation with increasing age. So if you can see over here at 15 years of age approximately so your x axis represents the age of the population and over here on the y axis we have the amplitude of accommodation. So you can see at 15 years of age the amplitude of accommodation is about 12 and if you go to 40 years of age this is this comes to about 4 diopters and then again go and uh, track near the 60 years so you can see here at 60 almost it is between 0 to 1 and then so on and so forth it is actually crossing and becoming even negative so as the age is increasing the amplitude of accommodation is actually decreasing and this is represented by the Donders curve. So what exactly happens in presbyopia? Now we know that one is usually accustomed to hold books at a reading distance and the reading distance uh, normally is about 25 centimeters from the eye. And how much uh, diopters of accommodation do we need to focus a book which is kept at 25 centimeters can be actually given by the formula 100 by working distance. Okay, This working distance is in centimeters and that's the reason we are putting it in uh, 100 over here since we know that the power is nothing but 1 divided by the focal length or the working distance in meters. So here by putting the same in this formula for 25 centimeters of working distance we need about 4 diopters of accommodation because how and how did I get that 100 divided by 25 that is about 4 diopters of accommodation. So about 4 diopters of accommodation must be exerted consistently if you want to read at 25 centimeters okay which is present in an emetrope all the time however if the person reaches at 40 years of age we have seen in this Donders curve that at 40 years roughly about four diopters of accommodation is present so maybe by 40 years of age 
the patient has just enough accommodation to look at 25 centimeters but what happens when the person is crossing this 40 years age limit and becoming 45 50 years and so on and so forth you can see now the available amplitude will be only three or two or one or zero so what happens is that as the amplitude of accommodation is decreasing the working distance will also increase and now the patient will have to put his book far away from 25 centimeters so the closer we need to see the more amplitude we need and if we do not have amplitude we need to put our reading material more far away as seen in this cartoon and the patient is actually trying to uh, put his book as far as possible in order to clear the print which is present and he is a press biopic individual so a normal person might put it at 25 centimeters whereas a press biop as can be seen in this picture has to put the reading material or any near vision uh, related task at a much more farther distance so why is the amplitude of accommodation decreasing at old age so that's a very common question and the answer was given by two theories one is the helmholtz theory and then we have the shatter theory of accommodation the Helmholtz theory is the most accepted theory which was given in 1855 and it says that during accommodation basically the ciliary body will undergo contraction and once the ciliary body undergoes contraction there will be relaxation of the zonules and as the zonules relax the lens will take a more spherical space shape. Now, in my video on accommodation, I already told you that as the lens becomes more sphere, we are adding more power to the lens and therefore we are increasing the power of accommodation. Okay, so if you're not sure about that, kindly go and watch that video first. Now again at rest what happens is the ciliary body is actually in a relaxed position and the ciliary body ring will expand and the zonular tension will therefore increase and the lens equator will get flattened and the power of the lens will decrease. So all this is happening because of the inherent elasticity of the lens capsule and also the lens proteins. But what happens in old age is that the proteins will undergo a biochemical change resulting in hardening of the crystalline lens and loss of elasticity of the capsule of the lens because of which this change of the shape of the lens cannot occur so freely leading to press biopia. So this diagram over here explains the Helmholtz theory of accommodation. So if this is a ciliary body and this is the lens and here you can see that these are the zonules. Okay, so as the ciliary body contracts, okay, what happens is the zonules are going to get relaxed and as the zonules relax, you can see the equatorial zonules are getting relaxed, the posterior zonules, the anterior zonules which are present towards the cornea, they are getting relaxed and the lens now is more relaxed uh, and it can take a more spherical shape in the accommodative state and as the lens take more accommodative state, the power of the lens will increase and we will have accommodation and increased power to look at the near objects. Then we have the Shatter theory which was totally different and opposite to that of the Helmholtz theory. Shatter, uh, this theory actually told that accommodation occurs due to the relaxation of the anterior and posterior zonules and uh, uh, increase equatorial zonular tension during the ciliary body contraction. So in the Helmholtz theory what did we see was that all the zonules were becoming relaxed as the ciliary body contracted. However, in this theory, it, uh, the, the scientists told that the anterior zonules and the posterior zonules are the only ones which will undergo relaxation, whereas the equatorial zone, that is the center one over here attached to the equator, this is the one which is going to actually contract, leading to uh, lens being pulled towards the equator. However, the peripheral, periphery part of the lens, that means the anterior zonal related and the posterior zonal related, they are more free to assume a spherical shape and because of that spherical shape, the lens will achieve its accommodation. So this theory explained presbyopia by saying that with time what happens is that 
the equatorial diameter of the lens the lens because of the position of the abnormal protein will become larger and it will become more larger at the equatorial distance so the distance between the uh, ciliary body and the lens will decrease and the zonules will become more relaxed so no amount of contraction of the ciliary body can actually cause tightening of the central zonules and relaxation of the anterior and posterior zonules because it decreased in the working distance of the ciliary body and the lens due to the increase in the equator of the lens however this theory is not very well accepted so this was uh, this diagram explained the Schachter's theory you can see that the equator zonules are showing tension in this diagram and the posterior and the anterior zonules are relaxed so only the central part of the lens is increasing in its uh, diameter and therefore causing accommodation now, how do you actually diagnose or how do you suspect breast myopia? So, age is a very important factor and the patient will actually complain of gradual onset of blurred near vision with near related tasks. Especially, it starts with smaller print when the patient is working in dim lighting. The reason we have these symptoms in dim lighting is that because um, as a part of the near reflex along with accommodation, we also see meiosis that is constriction of the pupil. So, constriction of pupil also uh, to some degree uh, contributes to accommodation when a person is working in dim light there will be actually dilatation of pupil or the midriasis and because of that this component will be taken away and the patient will actually now have to work only with the ciliary body and with only with the accommodation pure accommodation and therefore symptoms will be exposed similarly after prolonged near work or when the patient is fatigued he has already used his accommodation there will be the symptoms will get more enhanced the patient will also complain that there's difficulty in changing the focus from near to far so uh, even from far to near and the classic complaint is that my arms are not long enough to read anymore so what they tend to the patient tends to do is that they keep on putting their reading material or the needles very far away from their body and at one point they realize that they can't keep it more far and then it's time to visit the doctor so uh, other thing is that how will be the distance and near visual equity that depends on the presence of any refractive error in the patient. If the patient was already an emitrope, emitrope means a patient who does not have any refractive error previously, but now he has developed breast myopia, right? So what happens is in such patient is that they will have clear distant vision and now they will have complaints only for the near vision. Similarly in myopes as we know myopes uh, usually have a very good near point they can actually focus well for near and have problem in the distant vision. So they will have clear near vision at a near point but that near point might not be normal that near point will actually be determined by the amount of myopia which the patient actually has. Coming to hyperopes, hyperopes will have better distant vision compared to the near vision because in hyperopia we know both the distance and near vision are actually affected. So it all depends on the previous refractive error for of the patient and uh, that is going to determine the near equity problem uh, in these patients and therefore it is very important that whenever we do a near uh, vision examination we should first correct the patient for distance vision and on top of the distance vision correction only the near vision correction or revision trial should be done so we carry out uh, the near refraction for press biops so such near vision cards can be used and they are placed at what distance the near vision cards are placed at the habitual reading distance so this is the initial distance where the patient used to put his reading material which is usually about 25 centimeters or for some patients it could also be 33 centimeters and uh, the distance refraction should always be in place and the amount of plus power which is needed for clear near vision will then be determined by putting the plus uh, lenses in the trial frame now it is very important that you also know something about the range of clear near vision always always never overcorrect the patient with the plus lenses because what happens is that as you correct the patient very strictly with the plus lenses and you give more amount of plus lenses the range of clear vision will actually collapse 
okay however if you give them a, a little bit of under correction it will move the near point further away but the range of clear vision will ex uh, actually expand so what i mean to say is if the patient uh, is given a prescription to see at 25 centimeters if this is little bit under corrected he might be able to see on the either side of this measurement also that means say at 20 centimeters and also at 30 centimeters but too tight a prescription which is focused just for 25 centimeter might actually decrease this range and the patient might have bl blurred vision again at 20 centimeters and at 30 centimeters so that is what is meant by the range of clear near vision so at this point uh, for the basics who, uh, who do not understand why plus lenses are given plus lenses are the ones which will actually uh, stimulate accommodation uh, sorry which will actually cause more convergence and bring the uh, lines uh, bring the uh, rays of light on to focus on the retina so if you want to understand more on the convex lenses i would advise you to visit my video on hypermetropia so there i have explained you in detail about the convex lenses and the plus lenses the same plus lenses or the convex lenses are used for presbyopia also Next, is there a way to expect the or to predict the amplitude of accommodation without actually having to measure this amplitude of accommodation? Yes, there are. There are formulas which are used to calculate the amplitude of accommodation and these are the Hofstetter's formula and the Donders table. The Hofstetter's formula for the mean uh, for the average amplitude of accommodation is 18.5 minus 0.3 into age of the patient. So in, in this formula, you have to substitute the age. So suppose the patient is one year, so say 10 years of age, you're going to substitute into this. So that becomes 18.5 minus 0.3 into 10 years so that comes to 18.5 minus 3 so we will get 15.5 diopters so this will be your amplitude of accommodation the Donders table is an already ready-made table which will uh, actually give you the amplitude of accommodation for the particular age group. So you can see for 10 years it is about 14, for 40, 40 years it is about roughly 4.5 and then at 75 years of age it is becoming 0 diopter. So this is the Donders table. What if you don't want to uh, use the automatic tables and actually measure the amplitude of accommodation? There are two methods basically which we use. These are the push-up methods and the minus lens to blur method. The push-up method measures uh, monoocularly with distant correction in place and the near point of clear vision is determined and then converted to diopter. So basically for the push-up method we are using this special ruler which is called Royal Air Force Ruler also called the RAF rule. So using this rule we are going to determine the near point of accommodation okay and uh, the near point is then converted uh, is actually divided by uh, from one and we are going to get the amplitude of accommodation so this is how we determine it using the rf rule and the method is called the push-up method so in the push-up method basically we are moving the target towards the nose of the patient so since we are moving this is where the patient is going to sit and since the target is being moved up to the patient this is called the push up method and then we have a minus lens to blur method in which we do not actually move the target but instead we are going to keep the target fixed at about 40 centimeters now we know at 40 centimeters the amount of accommodation that we are going to need is 1 by 40 uh, in meters so that will be 100 by 40 so that is about 2.5 diopters that we are going to need now at this point what we do is we are going to add the minus lenses slowly okay Till uh, the patient gets his first blurred, uh, sustained blurred, okay, at 20 by 40 line that or 6 by 12 line, right? And the amount of minus that was added, okay, that will be added to plus 2.5 and finally we will get the amplitude of accommodation. So if the amount of minus lens that you add added was minus 2 diopter, so you are going to just add this 2 diopter to this 2.5 diopter and your amplitude of accommodation will be 4.5 diopter now if you want me to do a separate video covering this in detail kindly comment in the comment section and the video will be on amplitude of accommodation and its measurements 
So why uh, is this amplitude of accommodation in press biopsy so important? The reason is once you know the amplitude of accommodation, one half uh, the it's important because the patient can actually use half of this amplitude of accommodation comfortably for extended periods of time. So the patient does not actually use the entire thing. So if he has about five diopters, he's not going to use this five diopters every day to do his near task. He's going to keep half of it in reserve and use the other half of it roughly. So he can he will be actually using 2.5 diopters. Now this half value is also it varies from textbook to textbook. Some says that one third is kept in reserve and the remaining two-thirds is what the patient is going to use and some say that only half is kept in reserve and the other half the patient can use comfortably so what i mean to say is whenever a patient is having presbyopia his amplitude of accommodation should be measured first and out of because the amplitude of accommodation out of that half amplitude of accommodation is what the patient is going to use on it on his own and the other half is what we have to uh, actually sub uh, and the remaining from the error is what we have to actually supply the patient using our plus power. So let us understand that uh, with an example. Say the amount of plus power which is needed to read is determined by the patient's working distance always. Okay, It is always for the comfort of the patient what is his habitual working distance. Say the person is working at 16 inches or 40 centimeters. We know that the required amount is about plus 2.5 diopters. Now we will calculate the accommodative amplitude of the patient. Either you calculate calculate it or you use it uh, use the expected formulas and you find out that the patient's amplitude of accommodation say is about 5 diopters now in this 5 diopters we know that the patient already can use about 2.5 diopters that is half of its amplitude of accommodation right so now since the patient already so since the patient's amplitude of accommodation half of the amplitude of accommodation is covering up this 2.5 diopter need of accommodation we do not need to prescribe any additional plus power for this patient however if the amplitude of accommodation say falls below this if it was only three diopters then what has what happens the patient will only be able to use half of it that is about 1.5 diopters so out of this need of 2.5 diopters patient will be only uh, able to uh, accommodate 1.5 so how much is left for us to provide we will have to provide him with an additional plus one diopter additional plus power okay yeah so uh, that was about the uh, presbyopia basics in my next video i shall be discussing about the first line treatment that is spectacles in presbyopia what are the types of spectacles how do we prescribe in presbyopia and the same principle of how to give an ad in a patient in uh, of presbyopia with uh, from the accommodative amplitude calculations so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day